Alright guys, welcome to my outdoor studio. I want to do a video today based on a question I got a couple of days ago on general workshops on a giveaway that I posted a couple of days ago. It closes on the 7th, so if you want to get some giveaway goodies, go over there. Um, and I want to answer the question on video because I think it's something that we all have to deal with and I think it could be helpful. Okay, so the la lady's name is Sally and she asks... I have spent, well she says I've been watching YouTube videos for about five weeks now and she has spent oodles of dollars in supplies and every magical category, set up a great workspace and have so many ideas in my head that I have got myself stuck. I truly don't know where to begin and seem to be paralysed by watching more YouTube videos. I need to jump start myself somehow and stop watching and start doing. Has this ever happened to you? How to get going when you can't make a choice or follow through on a decision as there are so many amazing projects to choose from. Does anyone else ever get this way? Alright, so Sally, yes, I think a lot of us get that way. Um, and also I've got a few solutions for this. But the thing is with solutions regarding this problem is you really need to look at why the problem is. Are you just paralysed by overwhelm or are you procrastinating? If you're procrastinating that's a different video to do with other stuff you know. This is what I'm going to take from that is that you've just looked at so many videos, you've got so many supplies, you're new, you've only been watching it for five weeks and you're just getting so much information overload that you're getting overwhelmed and stuck and paralysed by ideas. So not only do we get overwhelmed from all that externally is coming at us, but then we ourselves as creators get so many ideas that we get overwhelmed by those as well. So if it's to do, I mean a few years ago this wouldn't have happened in terms of being so overwhelmed because the information that was coming at us wasn't as much as what it is now we know about. I mean I looked on Amazon the other day and I found a whole new category of supplies that I've never known about before. And I've been doing it for years and there's this whole section of um, media that I've never come across before which got me excited but I can imagine if you're new doing that with so much it gets overwhelming and now with Pinterest and YouTube videos and things that have ideas already in them coming at you you know 30 years ago the best you get for that is going to the library and getting a book out so the information has gone from being very limited you know, and now internet shopping, you can have any medium that you want at all. Um, so it's gone from being very limited to the whole world is your oyster. But the problem with that, the flip side with that, is it can get too overwhelming that it gets you stuck. So first off, if that's happening, if that's the problem, stop looking. Stop looking now. Um, and if you're not, if I'm t saying this to you and you're not stopping, um... It could also be that you're just gathering and you need to understand as a creative there is cycles to our creativity. I get overwhelmed and I get stuck and in fact a few days ago um, I did a blog post about slaying my dragons because a lot of issues have come up for me recently regarding my creativity and how I've had to slay my dragons and it doesn't stop. As a creative you will constantly come up against a block and another thing and another thing the, and then the thing again, when you thought that you'd sorted that out years ago, it happens to everybody. So if that's the case, then you might just, you might be in a phase where you need to gather inspiration. You might just need to get more comfortable knowing about medium and different mediums and just allow yourself to be in that space. Don't think that you have to do in order to be creative. There are cycles to being an artist. And sometimes that is just filling up the well and saying I'm not going to, you know, overburden myself with thinking I have to gather stuff in and push stuff out as well. Because if you're pushing stuff out, your heart's not in it and, and you know, you can burn yourself out and burn out isn't a good place to be. So it could be that, but also if it is paralysing you and you know it's time to stop, then listen to what I'm saying and stop. And understand that just drawing a little cartoon or painting a pebble, as I've been enjoying doing recently, 
or you know doing a doodle or arranging some flowers or there's loads of ways to be creative that aren't about art so don't think that you have to it just has to be about art there are oodles of ways to be creative you can do a bit you could write a poem there's so many things that you could do and understand that all that is art as well it doesn't have to be all of these ideas that are coming at you you know all of these really elaborate ideas that involve 50 different mediums it doesn't have to it can be one pencil and you can be doing art okay so there's that there's another thing regarding all the ideas um, as you can see I've got my trusty board here which is my big ideas uh, project board which I write down all of my ideas on these little cards. I have another video regarding how I capture all of my ideas. Um, so I'll stick a link to that video below. Uh, but this particular one, which is one of the three projects that I show you, is very effective for when you have idea overwhelm and there are so many just attacking your head all of the time. Because when you don't pay attention to an idea and it's going around and around and around, when you don't do something to get it out, it just continues to go around and around and around. And when you've got 50 of them doing that, you can just spend the day saying hello, hello, hello to a new idea or an, old, an idea that's been going around for a while. Because it's just reminding you that it's there. So to get them out onto a board like this, or it could just be a piece of paper where you stick post-it notes of, of your ideas. This helps me as well because I've got this at the top which shows me the different stages that I'm at with the idea. Again, that's all explained in that video, so I won't go through it. But having something visual like that, just so you've got all of your ideas there at a glance, means that you know where your head is at without them having to constantly saying, hello, I'm still here, hello, I'm still here. It gets them actioned a little bit so that they can calm down, so that you're not worried you're going to forget an idea because they're there in front of you. I'm going to talk to you about um, sitting with so many ideas for a time until one really hits you because I had this recently um, maybe last month I had it where I even wrote about a blog post how I was at ideas crossroads because there was just an idea on so many paths in front of me so many different ideas and every time I looked there was another fork in the road there's more and more and more and more and more and I couldn't decide where I wanted to go and the majority of comments that were left on that blog post said to me Jenny you'll know when it's the right one so I also want to say, this exercise that I'm about to do is about when you've had enough of waiting for an idea or when you know you just have to action it. A lot of this stuff is just filling your way through the water and figuring out what works best for you. And you're new, I'm talking particularly to you here, Sally, you're new. So you've got enough to have to figure this stuff out without, so stop putting pressure on yourself because it's going to be a natural evolution. So stop adding extra stress on yourself that says you've got to figure this stuff out now. Um... So I did, this is what happened with me, I had all of these ideas and then all of a sudden, bam, one came in and it was like, you are my idea, you are what I'm working on now. The other projects that I was working on that I was kind of stalling on because my heart wasn't in them, got left there for a minute and now I'm moving forward on this idea that came in, it's a new idea and it was just, you're, you're my path. So sometimes just taking that time to allow for the right idea to come through is the way to go. If it isn't, if you decide you want to do this exercise because you want to just get moving, then this is what you do. You journal it out. So get your journal and on one side, write down every project that you have that's going me, 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 me right now. Okay, so not every single one that you have, this project here, having a big project board or a project board, is for every single idea, or the ones that you want to work on right now, every single idea. This one is for just, say the top five or six that really won't leave you alone, the ones that you can't decide about. Not all the little niggly ones, but the ones that you really going, I really want to do that, but if I do that, I can't do that, and if I do that, I can't do that. Write those down here. And then what I want you to do, in a column next to them, I want you to draw a heart. Now, what happens in the columns next to them is whatever is applicable to you and the reasons why you are creating these projects. So, say you're an Etsy shop 
owner. And these projects down here, they're all um, representing different products that you want to make it for sale in your shop. So what will go here is a little pound, dollar sign, whatever. I've drawn a little um, note there. So that one will be money. Okay. So what's the heart is obviously how much you want to do this project, how much your heart is in this project. So if it's to do with making money, the next one will be making money. If it's to do with getting more followers on your blog, draw a bunch of people in the next column. So what? it doesn't matter how many columns you have, and it doesn't matter what is in your columns. You need to figure out what are my end goals for making these projects. Is it to give them as gifts? So you might have another one that represents a gift. You might draw a present. Is it gifts for people? Is it trying to get more blog followers? Is it getting money? And then there's also how much your heart is in it. Okay? So what I want you to do between all the other ones, all your projects and all of the columns at the top is rate between one and five how much of that thing is involved in that project. So number one, say it's an Etsy shop project, we'll go with that first. How much is your heart in something? Well this particular project, I know it sells well but I'm not too bothered about making it. So your heart's in it, let's say two. Okay. Next to the money, you know it sells well, you've made this project before, so you know it sells well, so you'll put five. Next to blog followers, say you've got an Etsy shop, so if you've got an Etsy shop you might have a blog. Um, so say that that will give you maybe a score of one, because it's another blog post that you'll get, you, you maybe show behind the scenes of making the product or something like that, so you can get more out of making that product. So that goes next to that. And then presents, well, you could think, well, I'm going to make, say, 10 of this product, so I might make 11 and make a present for somebody. So, you know, that's about two, you know, because I can, I can get some extra wear out of that product. So that's how you score it. So the next one could be a blog post. How much is your heart in it? Well, this blog post I really, really want to do. It's like what I did the other day with my blog post. It was calling to me about my dragons. Um, and when my heart is in a blog post like that, I notice more people enjoy my blogging. Um, so my heart was in it five. Money, zero. You know, um, unless you're a very good blogger and you, you make money out of your blog, I'm not very good. Um, <laughs> Um, the blog post followers, well, it did get me a couple more followers, so I'll put that at three. And presents for people, well, you know what, in a literal sense, it's it's not presents, but I did notice it did help a few people. So I'm going to put that down as a two, because it is a present in a more metaphorical sense. It's, it's a gift I was giving to people that wasn't a physical thing. So that is how you go through and you figure out your top few projects. Uh, your top few ideas that you can't figure out what to do and obviously the one that you do is the one that gives you the highest number. Now do this the day before you're going to do that next project, you know, if you're going to do it the, the next day, the next weekend, whatever. Do this first and then spend the rest of that evening or the rest of that week, whatever it is, focusing on that one project and what will happen is things when you do give your attention entirely to something things just start to do, 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 fit into place it's you know ask writers when a writer if a writer was to wait for inspiration it wouldn't happen but they know when they sit down and they make themselves do that thousand words inspiration comes when you focus what you need comes in and it's not coming in when you're scattering about with all of these different ideas so when you've got the highest score focus on that one do not spread your energy any further when you spread your energy no it happens 
Note means nothing where I'm from in this part of the world. No happens, mate, okay? So do this exercise and then stick to it. If you find you're not sticking to it, it could be an issue with procrastination that we was talking about in the beginning. So you really need to kind of rein yourself in and say, I'm not going to let my mental chatter over take over what I'm trying to achieve here, what I'm trying to do here. It's important to me that I want to get on with my creative projects because I'm feeling lousy, not knowing what to do. I've now got the tools, I'm going to focus and I'm going to figure out what it is is the best for me to work on and then I'm going to do that one idea. The final idea. When you are in that overwhelmed state or whatever and you feel like you do just want to relax and, and go with it, you don't want to do this exercise that I've just shown you and push something out. When you just feel like you need to allow it to pass naturally, then <clears throat> grab a pouch or a jar or something like that and write down little things that are creative that aren't demanding on you. Little things that you enjoy that aren't going to overwhelm or that you've done before. Okay, So don't try and stick down, I could learn five new mediums. No, that will overwhelm you. Do something that you've done before. So for me, I've said it before, think of it as TV craft. Things that you could do with one eye on the telly because it's not too demanding on you and it's not going to overwhelm you. So it could be Zen doodles, it could be my recent thing has been painting pebbles. Okay, um, I really enjoy it, it doesn't take any energy, it feels like it fills me up rather than depletes me. That's what you want is that kind of energy. And by the way, this is part of the giveaway that Sally commented on. So if you want maybe to win some of this sort of stuff and also some of my other products, actual products that I sell, then head over to Journal Workshops for that. One of my oldest and, and favourite is making paper beads because I could do it with my eyes closed. So it doesn't tax you. Write down a bunch of them, stick them in a pouch and when you just feel overwhelmed, da 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 da, pull one out and do that because it's better if it's a repetitive kind of craft because it's a relaxing effect as well. So it can drain out that overwhelm from you. Another one to do with a pouch or with a jar or with a box, whatever you've got, bag, whatever, um, is if you feel like you need to fill up the well, you need to gather inspiration, so this isn't when you're getting overwhelmed by watching too, too many YouTube videos or looking at too many new products, okay? This is when you feel like you want to gather, just spend time in new information and that's what you want to do. Write down as well on little pieces of paper different classes that you may have brought but haven't yet taken. Different YouTube videos you wanted to watch but you haven't yet done. Um, different artist searches that you wanted to do that you haven't yet done. Fill them in the bag and then when you feel like you just want to, or a book you maybe have bought that you haven't yet read. Things like this. Stick them in the bag because I know as creatives we're hoarders and as well as hoarding our goodies in our studios, we hoard all of the information as well, you know. Well, watch later on YouTube. Oh, I bought that class, and because it's a unlimited class, I'll take it. You know, in in three years' time, it doesn't really matter, and it stays there. Knowledge is power, as they say. But just buying the stuff or keeping it for later and stuff holds no power because you haven't got the information from it. So go and do those things that are on your wish list or want list or future list and go and do one of them okay so that is everything i've got for you sorry it's been higgledy piggledy i just got inspired to um do this video from sally and i'm very much at the minute or all the time every time um go with whatever your gut says and this was what it was telling me to do so i hope you found it useful uh go over and check out that giveaway
and the new monthly challenge video that is up on journal workshops um much love everybody come join me on my art community journalworkshops.ning.com to connect with other artists to ask questions share ideas share your artwork get inspired by others artwork join in our monthly challenges our other groups our other classes and just to connect with like-minded beautiful creative people like yourself much love everybody bye bye